Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Loop Masters. Welcome to another Ableton Live Basics tutorial. This one is going to be more intermediate to advanced. Hopefully you've been following along with the series so far, so you've got a good grasp on how to get around Ableton Live. But in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a more advanced delay return track. We're going to be using an auto filter with an LFO on it. We're also going to be using some sidechain compression to auto duck the delay out of the way of the vocal and just things of that nature to make the delay sit better in the mix and just have a little bit more movement and fluidity. So I'm going to be using a song starter from TD Audio, The Future of Modern Pop. TD Audio is an offshoot of Industrial Strength Records here on Loop Masters. Uh, if you like the little loop I'm using here, you can go ahead and download this pack and you actually get pretty much the full song in all of the different stems laid out. You get the dry vocal, you get the wet vocal, you get everything. But for this project, I'm actually just using uh, a looped portion and a chopped up bit of the vocal. You heard it at the beginning of the video. This is what it sounds like. So this is what the vocal sounds like by itself with just the return track with the delay effects on it. Back now. Back now. Back now. Back now. All right. So let's just go ahead and reset up this sort of chain of effects and I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing along the way. So the first thing we need is a return track. If you don't have a return track, just close down this group. You want to right click right here or control alt T to add a return track. I'm going to be using return track B and I'm going to jump into my Ableton Live effects and drop on a simple delay there. So simple delay. I'm going to crank the feedback up rather high so we get a long delay tail. And I'm just going to leave it on four or six for now. And let's just see how it sounds. You got to make sure to send the audio from the main vocal track to that, that simple delay return track by using this send right here. This is the send for return B. So I'm just going to go ahead and boost it up. And if we go ahead and listen now. Back now. Back now. All right, let's go ahead and send it 100% over there. Back now. Back now. So one other thing I want to point out here is that I've actually turned this return track way down. And I can get the same effect as that as turning the send amount down too. But I just had it at 100% when I started. And instead of going back up to that send amount, I just kind of mixed it using the volume fader for the return track itself. It's the same thing in concept. So now we have this, and the first issue that I'm going to deal with is the fact that this long feedback tail is actually interfering and clouding up when the vocal happens again, and I don't want that to happen. So what we need to do is set up auto-ducking so when the vocal happens, it actually pushes the delay chain or the delayed signal out of the way to make the vocal stand out better in the mix. And we're going to be doing that using sidechain compression. So I'm going to take Ableton Live's compressor and drop it on that return track with the delay. I've done a few videos on sidechain compression. If you wanna know more about them, just check out the playlist for this series and you'll be able to learn there. So I'm just gonna click this arrow, hit sidechain and take it from channel one, which is the vocals. And I'm gonna turn down the threshold fairly, uh, a fairly good amount because I really wanna push it out of the way. I'm gonna turn my ratio up, okay? That just means if it crosses the threshold, it's gonna turn it down even further. I'm gonna turn the attack way down and I'm gonna actually turn the release time down to a fairly quick number or a fairly quick time. And instead of peak, I'm gonna do RMS, which is gonna give it more of a gradual compression and suits our purposes better than peak. Peak is gonna be things more like drum side chaining and stuff because I want it to be more gradual and musical in this case. So let's listen to what we have now. Back now. Back now. Back now. Back now. Back now. Okay, so this is without. Back now. And now with. Back now. So you can hear how the vocal is much more clear and stands out better in the mix. Even though we have this soloed, it's going to do the same when we have the music in there as well. So this is just what's called some delay plugins that we have on Plugin Boutique actually have this feature built in, but inside of Ableton Live we don't, so we have to do it ourselves with the compressor using sidechain functionality. Now there's one other thing we can do here to make things a little bit cooler, and that's using an auto filter. So I'm going to put an auto filter on here. 
and I'm gonna boost up the resonance just a little bit and turn down the frequency. And then we're gonna use an LFO to move this. And I'm gonna turn it on sync. And if you look up here, the vocal comes in after two bars. So if I highlight this, this is an actually two bar range. So I wanna take my rate and turn it up to two bars, okay? Which means the LFO is going to close and open this over these two bars. And if we turn up the amount here and then go ahead and play it. Back now. Back now. Back now. Back now. So right now it's actually fading out and then fading back in, kind of like a sine wave would. So what we can actually do is take the offset and move it a little bit so it actually, you know, comes in and then goes down a little bit better, a little bit more musically. Back now. Back now. Back now. Back now. All right, so now that you can hear that, I'm using the offset about 283 degrees. Uh, you're gonna wanna do this with the music playing and just do what feels right, and you're gonna wanna do it to taste. So if I just go ahead and turn this on and go ahead and unsolo it, let's listen to what it sounds like in the context of the track itself. And it actually sounds better than the example I had in the beginning of the tutorial, to be honest. So anyway, I just wanted to share those kind of quick tips here inside of Ableton Live. You know, Ableton Live ships with so many stock plugins that you can really get any effect that you want as long as you kind of put your brain to it and figure out what you want to do and know what each plugin and each device can do inside of the DAW itself. So anyway, uh, I hope that helped you guys. I hope you have a better understanding of how to use the simple delay auto filter compressor to get a better delay return track inside of your projects. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Loopmasters. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Uh -huh.